The armed forces of the Philippines through the years relied on towed artillery which in itself is reliable in pulverizing enemy positions especially with the country's ongoing counterinsurgency efforts against the communists and Moro separatists plus radicalized terrorists that poses the threat against the country's overall national security as converted to its economic and societal development. The Philippine Army and the Philippine Marine Corps are said to have this platform that packs sufficient firepower that can conduct area suppression with continuous rocket barrage which inflicts damage on the enemy, both in terms of physical and psychological terms. The Philippine Army recently launched its new military units and subunits within the organization which preferences the potential plans of the service branch on acquiring new military equipment for the mandated duties and responsibilities as well as the anticipation over the arrival of several assets that may mean additional capabilities for them to obtain as it increases their effectiveness in combating an enemy that poses threat to the security of the whole nation. One of those activated is the second multiple launch rocket system MLRS battery wherein this subunit within the Philippine Army will be the one who oversees the responsibility of operating incoming MLRS for the service branch to have as it may fall under the larger artillery regiment. That may also come with another launched subunit that is the first land-based missile system LBMS where it will soon oversee the responsibility of operating missile platforms intended to be launched from land and to target opposition forces from both land and sea. This signifies the ever-increasing desire of the Philippine Army to increase its capability where aside from the aforementioned units, there is also the expansion of its Army Aviation Regiment that sought its own procurement plans of acquiring light attack helicopters and MEDEVAC platforms as well as the previously discussed details about its self-propelled artillery system as well as the medium tank and tank destroyer, fire support vehicle wherein both of these assets fall under the single procurement program known as the Light Tank Acquisition project. Shall these respective projects getting into realization, it means a lot for the service branch under the armed forces of the Philippines desire to enhance its counterinsurgency operations that better, effective ways of delivering firepower against a target are now in place. These facilities provide a helping hand for the government troops to get an upper hand over the situation that increases the resolve for the country's defense and security alongside the efforts being made by other military branches such as the Philippine Navy and the Philippine Air Force. In this article, we will discuss the sets of enhanced artillery platforms that are on its way to the Philippines from South Korea where recently, most of the country's big-ticket defense hardware have originated where aside from the Jose Rizal class frigates and FA-50PH, this multiple launch rocket system helps augment the country's existing artillery platforms that expounds the support needed for the ground troops to get hand-in-hand -hand on getting the government forces to the top of a combat situation. While the idea of having multiple launch rocket system is relatively new to the Philippine Armed Forces point of view, the existence of such platform is not new especially on several armies that have already employed them in several wars where the idea on area suppression of rockets in complement to the artillery platforms have already taken place. One may trace things back to the 15th century, 15th century, Korea where they employ the Pawaka, multiple rocket launcher which signifies the sophistication of the kingdom of the time, one that a modern Korean may go on obtain with the modern multiple launch rocket systems with the North Koreans employing the KN09MLRS while the South is now replacing the K136 Koryong with the more modern K239 Chunmu MLRS. During the Second World War, the well-known user of what will be the predecessor of a modern multiple launch rocket systems during that time was the Soviet Union where they employ the Katyusha rocket launchers against the Germans who at that time are invading the vast Soviet territory of what will be known as the Operation Barbarossa, nicknamed Operation Fritz, and eventually on the great counter-offensive all the way to the city of Berlin wherein they, along with the US and British allies at the time, have managed to defeat the German military in 1945. The principle regarding the MLRS comes with an idea that it is artillery, but it is rocket propelled aimed at obtaining continuous barrage of firepower coming to the enemy at a large number as opposed to usual artillery units that have come with a howitzer cannon and ammunition that is more of an enlarged caliber cartridge that it is fired one at a time before getting reloaded and the process gets repeated along once again. 
A modern MLRS is now better and more sophisticated wherein several platforms such as the M270 multiple launch rocket system came with a fire control system and may go with guided munitions on board the platform which increases the accuracy of the rocket's trajectory as opposed to the target that is intended to destroy. This evolution of the multiple launch rocket system is something that the Philippine Army, as well as the Marine Corps, missed throughout its operations from its respective foundation up to the present date in which the one from South Korea will render this service branch of the armed forces of the Philippines into having one of such platforms which is helpful in providing necessary fire support in augmentation to the existing artillery pieces and close air support aircraft such as the incoming A-29 Super Tucano. Hence, the capability provided by a multiple launch rocket system will be enhanced along the way as pounding a hostile enemy position may get simplified which may help the government gain the higher ground over a situation such as the ones that took place in the country's southern part with the recently ended Marawi siege as an example. Regardless of its age in which it is on the process of being replaced by a better and newer multiple launch rocket system in the South Korean Armed Forces Service, such platform is considered a welcoming improvement for the capability of the Philippine Army as well as those of the Marine Corps, especially in terms of providing firepower support that is meant to pulverize enemy positions in combat. It comes with 36 tubes that render the capability of this multiple launch rocket system to fire a full salvo of massive delivery of firepower against the target within 23 km range giving it additional support for the ground troops on its objective that requires such scale of destruction which assures that the target is obliterated and the area is flattened for the ground troops to move forward on its objective and finish the remaining pockets of the enemy in its position. Now with the vehicle that the Korean Armed Forces utilized for its K-136 Koryong that the Philippine Army sees commonality, the KM-809A16X6 truck chassis wherein it was derived from the United States developed M-809 heavy tactical trucks that it obtains wherein it will not be seen as much of a concern in terms of commonality and logistics chain as its integration within the Armed Forces will be smooth in terms of operating and maintaining the truck chassis that carries the K-136 36 Koryong MLRS. The M809 trucks that the Philippine Army obtains usually comes as a cargo truck type which comes with a 250 horsepower engine with a maximum speed of 84 km per hour and a range of approximately 800 km which is seen as greater than the Korean variant provided that comes with a 236 horsepower engine with a maximum speed of 80 km per hour and a range of 550 km. Nevertheless, it is with this type of vehicle that the K136 Koryong MLRS comes wherein it comes with a rocket launcher and components such as a fire control in a manner that with maneuverability comes the accuracy and efficiency required that will effectively achieve the purpose of these platforms at the expense of lesser munitions required to get the job done. Its munition comes with two variants, the K-30 standard rocket and the extended K-33 rocket, of which it only comes as the only ammunition fitted on board the K-136 wherein it needs 10 minutes for each platform to reload after a salvo of rockets was fired against the enemy, and such operation was done by maneuvering the launchers from its attack position to a safe place while getting it armed with a supply companion coming in a form of another K-109 truck that has 72 rockets for reloading. Like the munition, the K136 Koryong MLRS in itself comes at two variants, the original K136 and the improved K136A1 with the latter having the chance to be the one that will be supplied to both the Philippine Army and Marine Corps wherein it may come with improved materials that can be found on its tubes in the form of stainless steel. The Philippine Army and Marine Corps will soon be having additional artillery pieces that will augment the respective existing towed artillery wherein this one provides a salvo of continuous bombardment of its munitions against a target which overwhelms its capability to defend up in a form of saturation attack. Procuring the K-136 Koryong serves as an addition on the list of the South Korean-made products that have been provided for the armed forces of the Philippines that enhances its own desire for defense wherein these platforms may help support ground troops in the case of another devastating conflict in the future where it may go needed against harmful elements that pose threat in the country.
With this, it may go hand in hand with other units within the Philippine Army such as the M113 armored personnel carriers with some fitted with Elbert ORCWS as well as from other military branches like the close air support aircraft of the Philippine Air Force such as the OB-10 and the soon to deliver A-29 Super Tucano wherein these assets puts the government forces at the upper hand against the communist bandits and terrorists. Obtaining these multiple launch rocket systems are a first for the armed forces of the Philippines to have wherein they may gain additional skill sets and experience of obtaining such assets along the way wherein it may go handy as they will procure more sophisticated ones later on as other Southeast Asian nations like Cambodia and Myanmar obtain such MLRS platforms like the BM-21 Grad as supplanted by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. To take note, it was also with the BM-21 Grad which is also obtained by North Korea that the South Koreans prompted the development of the K-136 Koryong as its capability may help them match the array of MLRS assets that the Rouge neighbor in the North obtains in terms of firepower capabilities for saturation attack between both sides. As it gets delivered to the country, it will be interesting to see these platforms eventually entering active service within the Philippine Armed Forces as its performance, later on, may help suffice the need of the organization to enhance its capability which will ensure its efficiency in doing its duties and responsibilities in defending the nation. The continuous effort of modernizing the whole armed forces of the Philippines is considered an ever-increasing source of national pride that the citizenry is seeking for a capable military that has a sufficient array of assets to provide the necessary minimum credible defense posture required for the assurance of securing and defending the country's national sovereignty and integrity as a whole.